now we're going to move on to Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, for you, I got Ryan Tannehill. Uh, he's putting up an amazing season. I, th I think he found his home in Tennessee. He's got A.J. Brown coming back um, after being hurt. Corey Davis is playing, I think, his best football, which isn't really much because he hasn't done anything. But they also got a decent tight end out there too, Johnny Smith, and, of course, Derrick Henry. Takes a lot of pressure off of him. I think he'll be out there for at least another five years. He's still, like, relatively young in quarterback years. So, good move getting him. Yeah, I think they signed him to a four-year deal, I think. So, he's the guy at least for another three and a half years. Oh, yeah. Easy. Um, I got to say for Jonathan, um, another Titans player, uh, Jayon Brown, linebacker, uh, putting up solid numbers for him on his defense. Uh, and it seems like he's outscoring a lot of his offense too. Uh, you know, you don't see that too often outside of the Martinez's and the Wagner's and, uh, some of these big name guys, uh, but I think that's that's who I'm most surprised by. And I think I'm most surprised by him holding on to Antonio Brown for so long. Uh, I know he got him in a trade with Drew, but I didn't see him ever coming back. So, I mean, we'll see if he is the Antonio Brown of the past. But uh, kudos for that, I guess. <laughs> So weird. I did not see that happening either. That's an awesome addition. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, for Jonathan, I have uh, Schultz, a tight end from Dallas. Came in like third string on the depth chart in the beginning of the year, and now he's a the tenth rate tight end in mm -hmm. fantasy. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that, and I'm also pretty mad because Jarwin's still in my IR slot. <laughs> I was really big on Jarwin coming into this year because he played behind uh, – what's his name? Witten uh, all that season. So I thought he was going to finally get his shot, kind of like Johnny Smith. Uh, but, you know, sadly that wasn't the case. The Cowboys right now is a hole, though, man. Like, Dak was pretty much that whole offense. <laughs> Which is I, think good, I think it makes it a good case for him actually getting paid next season, though. I really think he did show that he's earned that paycheck that he wants so badly. Um, but I think they will try to screw him out of some money just because of that injury. So, I mean. <laughs> if the Cowboys don't pay him, someone will. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. The Redskins, hell yeah. Ooh, God, they pay him so much money. So much fucking money. And he'd get his revenge twice a year. <laughs> and you know he'd just shit on that defense. <laughs> Worst defense right now. Yeah. All right, so uh, now let's uh, go ahead and move on to Kyle. Uh, Kyle, for you, got Brendan Ayuk, receiver for the 49ers. He's uh, quietly coming on pretty strong, putting up some double-digit points. The wide receiver room is pretty much wide open out there. Um, I think he could be a, another dependable receiver for Kyle with the hundreds that he has. But I didn't see Ayuk doing much out there. I, I kind of feel like the 49ers are kind of like the Patriots in the sense of, like, you can't really trust anyone but the quarterback. And even then, it's, like, iffy. Um but Ayuk, he's obviously got plays scripted for him. And it looks like he's a better receiver than I thought he was coming out. So, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, Kyle and his no shortage of talented receivers. Um, I have Christian Kirk um, for my surprise, mostly because with Hopkins coming in, I thought, you know, everybody else, everybody else's role was going to dwindle um, and that he was just going to be that main factor. But uh, Kurt, last four games, just balling out. And I think that is a factor, or I think Deontay plays a factor into that just because 
he's drawing the best cornerbacks and, you know, every defense is planning for him. And so that just frees up more opportunity for Kirk to get those looks just because everybody's so worried about Hopkins. Um, but he's had multiple games over 50 yards and um, five touchdowns in his last three games. So I was very surprised by that with uh, Hopkins coming in. I actually had, even though it's not a surprise to many people, I actually had DK Metcalf here. Um, Because I didn't expect him to be the number two receiver in fantasy, but I think just because Seattle's defense is like pretty atrocious right now, it's forcing them to just pass like crazy. Uh, It just surprised me that he's, you know, going to be a top five receiver for fantasy this year. And he already has eight touchdowns so far in the season. So that's how I got for his most impressive player. Really? The most impressive thing I think about Metcalf this year was that chase down tackle for 96 yards. I mean, the dude is a freak. Uh, he honestly looks like – looks and runs like he was built in a lab. <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, Buda Baker ran a 4-4 at the combine, and he chased him down from 20 yards behind him. Yeah, he had a 20-yard head start, and it, I, it's honestly like when I watched it, I was watching it live, I went on uh, YouTube just to find it so I could watch it like five more times, 30 seconds after I watched it live. It was just <laughs> bananas to see a, a chase down like that. I mean, defensive uh, or yeah, defensive coordinators everywhere probably got a boner just because somebody didn't give up on a play. Like, when every other receiver on that field, you know, probably just moping around, kind of like an Allen Robinson move. Absolutely. And, I mean, honorable mention also to Calvin Ridley. What the fuck? Like, the Falcons can sport two fantasy-relevant receivers like that. (laughs) But with Kyle's receivers, like, he has so much. He needs to deal them for, like, tight ends and quarterbacks and other let's not forget Henry Ruggs either Ruggs is a he's interesting but he hasn't really produced outside of a few games he's like the definition of boom bust but he has all the talent in the world I think do you think that Calvin Ridley and DK Metcalf are top five dynasty receivers yes yes I, I think that's an easy yes and it's crazy to think that he's got both of them, not through trades or waiver wire, just drafting. Mm-hmm. It's got just that patience. I, I like his strategy, just that patience. I mean, his receivers mostly stay healthy, and they're producing, and they're showing that they're uh, quality wide receivers, and this isn't just like a uh, one-and-done kind of season. Like, his receivers have been, like, showing progression since he's had them. So I like his strategy, and, he, and Kyle's going to be someone to reckon with in the next year and two years, just purely because of his wide receivers. So if he drafts well, I mean, outside of receivers, it's going to be uh, pretty annoying, I think. <laughs> that, that patience thing is big, too, because he waited with Damian Harris, who now looks like a significant part of that New England back. Um, backfield rotation like that that's pretty ballsy to hold on to a guy for that long who was basically hurt his whole rookie year and didn't really play good moves on his part oh yeah Uh, uh, now we'll move on to Drew Um, Dan why don't you start us off here alright Drew um... oh (laughs) It might sound uh, a little weird, uh, but I'm going to go with uh, Cole Komet. Um, the Bears drafting a quarterback was kind of – it was weird as a Bears fan because they had – I think it was like eight or nine rostered at the end of the year last year, and then they go and pick up uh, Jimmy Graham. But when Komet is on the field and, like, actually a part of the offense, he makes really athletic plays and um, is a good blocker. So – 
I think he's going to be a solid tight end um, when Jimmy Graham is in there. And I'm pretty sure he's only, only on a one-year deal. Um, Komet's not producing now, but I think he will. And that's just going to be a better case for Drew and his overall like team building because he has Higby too. Um, so, yeah, it's it's Komet for me. That's interesting. That's an interesting choice. A rookie. I, I mean, I, I just know – from watching Bears games. Like, the dude is going to be good. Um, and uh, I think he's going to make a case for Drew moving forward. Um, I don't think he's going to do much more than he's done this year. I think he, what he's got, like, nine points the week he played you uh, when he got a touchdown, I think. And that was one of his better games. And he showed his ability to make big plays and be a solid blocker. Yeah. No, that's good analysis. I like that. And it looks like Drew's going to be patient with him and hold on. Yeah. One, one person I don't think he should be patient with, though, as a Bears fan, is David Montgomery. I mean, Montgomery's a decent running back, but that offense that Nagy is running, um, it's, it's no good. Nagy needs to give up play calling, and um, they can't keep running Montgomery and Cordell Patterson up the middle between the tackles uh, on third and 12 and expect something different. So that's my two cents about Bears players on his team. <laughs> I like that. And uh, tight ends are always weird because it usually takes them like two to three years to actually get into their like niche in an offense. Uh, but he's like freakishly athletic, athletic and he's like six foot six. So, but uh, for Drew, I have Mike Davis. And purely for the fact that he stepped in for McCaffrey and he has like 600 total yards and four touchdowns uh, since McCaffrey got hurt. So I was just impressed by his way to step in and, and keep that offense firing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that it kind of, it kind of lets uh, Christian McCaffrey heal up a bit too, you know, cause now they're not so hard pressed to find a, a suitable backup. But I right. think at least what we were talking about earlier with Bridgewater, he's got that offense kind of moving. He's doing surprisingly well. They're almost – they're practically running a sprint. In a way, yeah. But uh, for Drew, I actually picked Kyler Murray. Um, and I think – my hot take on this is that Kyler is what people think Lamar Jackson is. Oh, <laughs> Kyler can run great. He's fast. He's not as um, great of a runner as Lamar, but he's five times the pass that Lamar is at this point. And Watching Kyler just throw some dimes, like lasers. Um, and it's like while sprinting to the sideline running away from defenders. The dude is unreal. A great fantasy quarterback also. Just uh, getting all these rushing touchdowns. And I know he broke some record kind of recently. Like, I think it's over 2,000 passing and 500 rushing or some shit like that. Just insane. And um, he's only 5'10". Yeah. Bananas. But, yeah, and I mean, I guess that, that kind of – because you have him, Russell Wilson, and then you had Herbert at one point, and Drew Brees. He felt like he needed to make a move, and he made a move with me. And I'm, I'm really glad I got Herbert, because Herbert is balling the fuck out, too. But it's because Kyler and Russell are just above Herbert that Drew could have – that Drew could make that move. Yeah, I was high on Herbert, too, but I didn't think he was going to come out and put numbers immediately. Anybody saw um, Tyrod getting his lung puncture, punctured by a doctor and Herbert stepping in was that week two and just balling the fuck out. That's not even the craziest thing that happened this season because COVID is just nuts. Like this whole thing with the COVID stuff, like I feel like the league's done a really good job of dealing with it, but it has been really annoying some weeks and it's, it's always terrible whenever you see just a team have a positive test, you're like, oh, well, fuck, there goes, like, five of my guys. 
<laughs> Somebody shut down a facility. Yeah. Um, so I think, Cam, we can talk about Dan uh, real fast about the most impressive player. Uh, Dan, feel free to chime in at the end if you picked one for yourself. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and start. Mine's Tyler Boyd. I got to, like, just eat crow on this one. I sold you him and Robbie Anderson for Julio, which is awesome, but you got the better end of that one. And you got a first-round pick, too. Um, But Tyler Boyd looks like he's a really, really great receiver out there. I don't really think that he's going to be the number one after T. Higgins fully develops into whatever T. Higgins is going to become. But I feel like he can have that kind of, like, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods type of combo where they're both like really relevant in fantasy together because Boyd is just a target hog and Joe Burrow is throwing the ball a lot. I know he's had uh, what the one game that I watched, he threw the ball 60 times. Yep. So the targets are there. Um, unfortunately, that Bengals team is very bad. So, but I guess that's good for you because Boyd will be getting more targets. And I think AJ Green is on his way. Like this offseason. Yep. Um, I, I definitely like that assessment on Boyd. And I had Boyd last season. Uh, and he's kind of an enigma, I think, as a receiver. Because when he when A.J. Green was out, he did well. And then when A.J. Green came back, he still did well. Um, I think Boyd is just a, um, a solid receiver. And I think he's going to be a solid receiver. Uh, for a long time, and like Johnny said, with the throwing for 60 times in a game, you know, he and Dak Prescott did that. I think Prescott threw for like 47 uh, attempts on one of their comeback attempts against Seattle, as it was. Um, so, yeah, Boyd and T. Higgins, I think they're still just always going to get targets. Uh, but who I actually uh, picked for your team was. Uh, Travis Fulgham. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, honestly, but I think he's a solid waiver pickup. And these, he's the second um, Eagles receiver I've mentioned, I'm pretty sure. But the yeah, Greg Ward, but, um, these guys are getting their opportunity and they're making the most out of it. And Jalen Rager coming back um, last week. And these guys are still doing well and producing. Uh, I think they're really making their case to be actual producers on that uh, team. And we'll see what Alshon does, if anything. But I think Fulgham has solidified his role as a dominant receiver. And watching him actually like play and catch and make plays, he's a fun receiver to watch. Yeah, what a cool story, man. And, like, I mean, Stephon Diggs had a similar come up. Um, it's possible. But Wentz loves him. And Wentz, like, needed someone to love because that dude's been struggling this year. I think uh, honorable mention is DeAndre Swift. Start to slowly but surely take over that um, backfield. I, I, I didn't think it was going to – happen as quickly just because with them signing uh, AP I thought it might take a little bit longer but I think he's uh, taking over that backfield uh, pretty steadily and he's had a few games where he's like had a few drop passes in the end zone so if he works out some of those kinks and he's going to be a producer like you know a 1.6 draft will do yep yeah, and he's young. He'll develop, but he will be the off-season hype piece of the year for sure. <laughs> Once AP is gone and Swift basically has the keys, he's all he's money. Dan, did you pick anyone for yourself? Uh, I actually did. Uh, Antonio Gibson. Okay, okay, that is. Yep. A <laughs> uh, him and Swift have been my. Well, Gibson was my surprise, but they've been carrying my running back group. <laughs> uh, he's getting 20 touches a game. He, did, he had his first 100-yard game two weeks ago, so uh, he's on the come up on a terrible team. So. I 
was good to, to see. I like that. Uh, and got last but not least, the commissioner himself. Well, now we're, we're going to talk about you. Oh, back. Oh, yeah, because my name's not written down in my notes. That makes sense. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, and I'll start off uh, for you. Uh, Chase Claypool. Wow, 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 wow. Came on a lot quicker. I've, I, I'm caught recorded on a few other podcasts saying he'll be good. It's just not his time yet. I was wrong. It's his time. He's easily number two out there. Um, I don't know what Juju is, but Juju still gets his targets. Uh, Deontay Johnson just really can't stay healthy. So if Claypool can stay healthy, continue to develop, because keep in mind, he is a rookie. He's definitely going to get better. He has all the tools in the world. Big, strong guy. He's money. That's a good pickup. And that was a third-round draft pick, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was 3.5, maybe. Yeah, that's that's where Dynasty is won, is in those middle rounds right there. If you can get... And that was after I got Rager at, like, 2-3. So... Uh, they compared Claypool to Calvin Johnston <laughs> on the and the NFL number two. <laughs> if that were true, uh, I'd be very happy. <laughs> but for you, I uh, I had Tanyan just because I he really came out of nowhere and he's like for his size, he's freakishly fast, and I I'm just impressed by the way he's been playing this year. I actually got him from a trade with uh, Johnny a week and a half ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. My tight ends are probably my most frustrating piece, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm really kicking myself for trading Waller with uh, James. It's just nice to have. I didn't realize like how scarce these uh, real A1 tight ends really are. and Because uh, like certain offenses... Should... From those like, top four is... Head and shoulders, just up there above the rest. Dude, like George Kittle is still injured, and I'm, I bet he's still in the top ten of scoring. Just because, yeah, I'm sure. How high of a cut they are above everyone. Uh, did you have one for yourself, Cam? Um, I'd say Claypool, honestly. Uh, I didn't write anybody down, but he's a person I've been most pleased with this year. Uh, really drafting, um, and uh, I'm really just excited about what he can potentially do. Now it is myself. You guys want to take it away? Yeah, so uh, for you, um, I don't know, you might not see it as a – you'll probably understand, but I think Zach Moss – I know I told you before the season I was big on him and I was planning on draft, um, mostly because I thought he was going to take it over in the backfield, but I didn't think it was going to happen that quickly. Um, and now it's – I think it's its clear as day that Moss is a better back. They know it. He's going to get the goal line looks. Uh, Singletary's on the field for more snaps, but he's not even making anything of his opportunities. So I think Zach uh, Moss is – Really that guy for you. Um, maybe not the guy for you. That's not what I mean. But the one that's most surprising so far. No, I'm really impressed with him because this is all – he got hurt like a week three or four. And this is his uh, – maybe his fourth game back. But like you said, like I don't watch a lot of Bills games. I, I watch Red Zone. So, you know, of course I see the touchdowns and shit. But the, um, the fantasy cast – the Bills seem to move better whenever it has Zach Moss in there over Singletary. So I think it's just a matter of time. But Singletary is a hard guy to knock out because whatever Moss does, Singletary will match in some way. So I think they, they've got a good team out there. They're just playing well. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, for you, I know he had almost 1,000 yards last season, but uh, I got to trade for him. From the skins, I'm still gonna call him the Redskins. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's even with uh, 
terrible quarterback play. He still put up some crazy good numbers. So I'm really impressed with him. Yeah, freshly acquired. Got him from uh, James, didn't you? Or not James. Drew? Drew, yeah. Freshly acquired. And the first game I started, I mean, Drew, he gave me a 20 dog. So cool. With it. <laughs> Uh, I think I will mention is to uh, I didn't think I didn't think that they were going to be making that quarterback swap so quickly. I mean, I thought uh, Fitzpatrick was doing well, and they were just going to keep rolling with him. I, I was pretty surprised that he was coming in this early, and he had a great game uh, last week. And I think Miami is moving in their direction as an organization. So honorable mention to uh, I really feel bad for Fitzpatrick. That's a really shitty way to lose a job. Yeah, I'm surprised after they did Jacksonville before the trade deadline. They were they were on they were on a little they were on a little to his first game that he started was against the Rams, which is already a pretty decent team. And what your defense goes out there, gets a touchdown, and Jakeem Grant returns like two punts, I think it was, maybe a kickoff. So he wasn't really asked to throw a lot. And then you're in that shootout with Kyler Murray. Cardinals are a pretty good defense. Mm-hmm. And he, he won. So I'm very impressed with him. I'm starting him over Wentz this week, and Wentz has the Giants. So <laughs> Just your confidence in Tua or your lack I'm of confident. confidence in Wentz and Philly. Wentz burned me bad that week that I lost to Brendan. Um, it was a pretty close game, but was put up eight points, right? and it was against like the Cowboys or Giants or one of those teams. Like he should have put up way more. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm confident in Tua. I think that he's doing well with pretty terrible weapons around him. Um, I think the Dolphins will definitely like address that in free agency and and in the draft. I know a lot of the early mocks have Jamar Chase kind of linked to the Dolphins, but even if they miss out on, like, Jamar Chase, they could still get, like, Devontae Smith or Waddle, who Tua has played with before. So I think weapons are going to be coming in for Tua to help them out. Um, But I think my uh, biggest surprise player for myself is Jeremy Chin. Oh, yeah. Rookie. (laughs) Rookie out of nowhere. Play safety. He's he was number one, but he didn't play last week, so I'm sure he's dropped. But, like, holy shit, I, I missed him coming into the draft. He was not on my radar. Um, and then I was just kind of looking because one of my safeties wasn't performing very well. And I picked him up and kept him, and I'm really glad that I did. Cause, but I, I had no idea about him, honestly. Yeah, I texted you about him two weeks ago. I got – yeah, he's putting up – Solid points for a safety, especially on a rookie. I mean, that's like just looking at fantasy, that's defensive uh, rookie of the year numbers right there, at least. And that's just a waiver wire pickup. Solid. Honestly, yeah. Going back now, Chin, that's your most surprising player for me. That's crazy. <laughs> um, Took some league history. You guys want to want to hear him? <laughs> So, this is the most even season our league has ever had. Uh, no one's going to compete for the best team of all time because that belongs to the Tuscaloosa Timbers from 2017 and 2018, who were 11 and 1. So, that can't be touched here. But we do have a team chasing history. The worst team of all time was the 2018 Fear Boners at a 1-11. and 11. So, <laughs> if Jonathan loses three games, he will be the worst team of all time. This is the Jets. The Jets <laughs> of the league. <laughs> Whoa. History may be made. Are you telling me something good might come from 2020 after all? <laughs> that is nuts. Do, does Jonathan get a win? What is his schedule looking like? 
I know that this week we have him against Matt, and Matt has the advantage. So the only I think the only one he's got a chance at winning is James Week Twelve because he's playing Matt, and then he's playing Brandon, and then James. Oh man! So I, I think it's a healthy scratch for the next two weeks. That it's not going to be one of those that he's winning, but chance against James, but, you know, that'll probably be the week Kamara puts up, like, 50 points and just shuts him out. Hey, you can't say something for Matt going from 1-11 and 11 to two years later competing for a playoff spot. Oh, yeah, that says a lot. I think overall the league has got it, um, is getting a lot more even. It's, like, really fun now because now every week you're just kind of watching other people play, too, because it yeah. kind of is your – playoff spot and you're not dan you're not far off from being in this hunt after this draft if you land on i say three of the five yeah that's in the quarterback spot you'll be oh yeah for sure because <laughs> if the reason i rebuild rebuild if, if you look at the league history i re i'm rebuilding because like 2017 and 2019 i placed third and then the one year I was on deployment, but I still was fourth in scoring, but I was four and eight. <laughs> yeah. So it's that top season. Rebuild time. But the crazy thing is it's not even a total rebuild. I think I mean it's it's a a moderate to light rebuild. Because you got the pieces on offense as far as receivers and young running backs. I, I mean, I don't even think it's a heavy duty rebuild. I think it's just some research at, at the draft and maybe some savvy uh, preseason trades. And I, I think you're just right about there. Like That's what I'm a quarterback. I, think I might find. <laughs> you said what? I said I might find two. Oh, <laughs> coming in hot. And then um, I think that you need to shore up your flexes just a bit more, kind of have a little bit more depth. Because I do think that a running back is probably in your future. Maybe a man from Bama by the name of Najee Harris, <laughs> who I'm, I'm, I know I'm not going to get, so I'm going to talk him up. The dude's next in line from Henry. That's all I'm going to say. And he can <laughs> catch I will add that. <laughs> but do you guys have anything – that y'all want to say to each other going into this matchup. Dan, are you going to destroy his playoff hopes? Cameron, are you going to keep Dan down? What's going on, man? Uh, I, I got to say, I don't, I don't think I got it uh, this week. I mean, I'm not overly confident about it. I need some really big plays from some guys that have been sleeping the last few weeks. So I'm not overly confident. <laughs> I think it's getting uh, right before my eyes. I, th I think I might be able to pull the upset, but even with that being said, he'd still be in the hunt. He has more points than uh, the other six and three teams. So uh, even if he does lose this week, he can win out and still make it. I played Brendan on week 12, so. <laughs> Not overly confident about that one either. Like, whenever I'm making the schedule, these last couple games, I call them the rivalry games. And I try to basically use that ranking that we all did, tier off teams, and try to match people off with a, with a team in each tier. But Dan was ranked pretty high, but then he did a rebuild. So that really messed up some people's schedules. So some people are playing against teams with lower records, but in the beginning of the year, it was higher. So it's, it's interesting to see how it's all playing out now, but it looks like the league is even enough to where we're going to have games that matter pretty much every single week, uh, especially from here on out. They're going to be, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I am very excited. Absolutely. Yeah, this is really getting to a, a point in the league where it's just going to be more fun 
week to week uh, and just watching the matchups with some of these teams that are becoming more evenly ranked because looking at teams like Drew and Kyle uh, and the young talent that they have, uh, they both know how to draft well. So I think it's just going to even out across the boards even more moving forward. And I'm really excited to see just an overall competitive league and some of the trades that uh, Jonathan has done as well. You know, it's recently just been getting a lot better. Sure. But I wouldn't lose hope if I were you either, because if you look at the league history, there's been a seven and five team make it every year. Yeah, it's one thing to make it and be in and just feel confident about the teams that you're playing against. So if it were, you know, me, Christian, Johnny and Brendan, I'm just not confident after that first week of playoffs that I'm going to, you know, round two. That's understandable. It's a, the playoffs are a beast, and Dan knows it more than anyone. The <laughs> two with against some of these guys, it's not fair. Two weeks against Dalvin Cook. Can you imagine if the playoffs were these past two weeks? It'd be done. It'd be so crazy. Like, for you. <laughs> um, the tw- 2018 season where Blake Christian in the championship. We were 11 and one and like by far the best team. The playoffs are just a beast. I blew it. Damn girly. <laughs> Never gonna forget them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but this year though, with uh, like so many teams so close, I think it's also important important to try and find those matchups. So like, who is Matt? Cameron, myself, Kyle, Brendan playing, and if they're ever playing against each other, you have to win those matchups to get into the playoffs. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like a mini playoffs within itself. But we are about out of time. I got my recorder dinging off. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the podcast. Any final words before it cuts us off? Good luck uh, this week. Dan, thank you for your service and uh, go to hell this week. <laughs> you too, and uh, good luck this week, you guys. <laughs> Everyone except for Christian. He's out.